Over the last decade, private space companies like SpaceX have brought the cost of space travel down significantly, opening up a whole new frontier for others to literally reach for the stars. In fact, space may very well become the future of manufacturing. At least that's what the founders of startup Varda Space Industries believe. Their goal is to create literal space factories. So how exactly does a space factory work? And more importantly, if we already have factories here on Earth, what's the point? Will these factories truly become the future of commerce or is it just another big flashy but ultimately useless endeavor? We thought these questions deserve a deeper dive here on Tuba Da Vinci. Special thanks to Climeworks for sponsoring this video. Be a part of the solution by removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere with Climeworks. We all know the idea of space commerce has had a thriving history in science fiction. Images of Sigourney Weaver and her crew of space truckers getting slowly picked off by a drooling xenomorph may come to mind. But the truth is that the final frontier has been a hotspot for research development and innovation for over half a century. Stretching all the way back to 1969 during the Soyuz 6 missions where Russian cosmonauts first performed welding experiments in space. But like so much of the history of space travel, outside of government funded research, very few people have truly had the opportunity to take full advantage of all the benefits that space has to offer. However, that's all beginning to change thanks to private companies like SpaceX, which have made good on their promise to bring the cost of space travel down by a factor of 10. Now, private companies who never imagined space as a possibility are suddenly dreaming to infinity and beyond. One company poised to take full advantage of this new space age is a startup called Varda Space Industries. Company co-founder Will Brewey spent six years working for SpaceX as a hardware engineer, working for Crew Dragon and Spacecraft Systems Officer of Mission Control for eight ISS missions. Brewey and his partner, Dillian Asparov, have a simple goal, to build scalable, economically viable manufacturing facilities in space. The company, which formed in November of 2020, is already set to launch its first vessel into orbit abroad SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket in 2023, with a second launch already planned for that year as well as a third in 2024. The vehicles will be outfitted with two Varda-made modules, a microgravity manufacturing module and a re-entry module. Though the process will take place in space, the principles are actually pretty grounded. Companies will approach Varda with a product that will be partially produced in space provide requirements, and Varda will design the pod to make it happen. From there, Varda will take the raw materials and launch them in a self-contained expendable pod, though the long-term goal is to make reusable pods to avoid more space trash. Once the process is finished, the pod returns safely to Earth with all the products ready for sale and distribution. The main reason all of this is possible is thanks to Falcon 9's milestone rideshare missions. It's essentially Uber in space. Multiple companies share the cost of going to space, which makes it more affordable for everyone. SpaceX even promises to eventually bring down prices to as low as $1 million per individual customer for up to 200 kilograms of payload into synchronous orbit. So great, we have a cost-effective infrastructure for launching more stuff into space. But you might be wondering, why do we even need space manufacturing? Don't we already have plenty of manufacturing here on Earth? Turns out there are actually multiple benefits to making things in space. Thanks to research conducted in places like the ISS, we know that there are countless products that can actually be developed and manufactured in space that would be incredibly difficult and expensive, if not entirely impossible here on Earth. The key is unlocking the benefits of microgravity, something that can only be found in space for sustained periods of time. Products like artificial organs, an artificial heart, for example, with its four empty chambers and intricately structured muscle tissue is virtually impossible to create here on the ground. Tissues printed with runny bio inks made of gels and stem cells often collapse under their own weight, requiring scientists to add either toxic stabilizing chemicals or build some sort of scaffolding. Printing the organs in space would allow scientists to use pure bio inks with the fragile structure simply floating in microgravity. This innovation alone could have major impacts here on Earth, where over 120,000 people in the US alone are currently waiting for transplants, hoping for organs they may likely never see due to donor shortages. But the benefits don't stop here. Everything from fiber optic cables to silicon wafers, carbon nanotubes, and eventually 
artificial meat are all incredibly challenging and expensive to produce here on Earth, particularly because they are all highly prone to contamination due to microscopic dust particles that are nearly impossible to fully eradicate even in the most sterile environments. Space, however, is already a naturally occurring vacuum chamber, free of all contaminants. Before we get back to the show, I got a feeling you're like our sponsor this week, Climeworks. Climeworks is the leader in removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They use a technology called direct air capture, removing CO2 from the air either to be reused in business purposes or permanently and safely turned into stone through rapid mineralization. If our climate problems are like a sinking ship, then EVs and solar panels are our ways of plugging the leaks, while direct air capture is like bucketing out the water that's already on board. Here's how it works. You just select a subscription level and your contributions are put toward Climeworks' current and future projects, like the Orca, the world's largest direct air capture plant that they just opened in the third quarter of 2021. A Climeworks subscription might even make for the perfect gift for the eco-conscious person in your life this holiday season. Head over to gift.climeworks.com slash tubadavinci to give the gift of carbon dioxide removal this holiday season. Huge thanks to Climeworks and all of you for supporting the show. In 2014, NASA conducted experiments that revealed that bodily tissues grown in space experience 10 times better tissue quality and size. Z-Bland fiber optic cables saw improvements of 100x compared to silicon fiber made on Earth. And the Wake Shield project, which utilized a 4 meter large manufacturing platform using the ultra vacuum of space to make thin film semiconductors, saw improvements 10,000 times better than those made here on Earth. Those improvements alone seem totally worth the effort and investment. But let's talk cost. How much does it compare to making these things on Earth? As we mentioned, thanks to SpaceX, launch costs per kilogram have dropped roughly 13x from 1980 to today. Varda co-founder Dalian Asparov estimates further decreases of less than $1,000 per kilogram with the bold hope that we could even see costs between $50 and $100 per kilogram by 2025. Those last figures may involve a bit of wishful thinking, but less than 30 years ago, even the thought of cheaper private space flight was also seen as pure science fiction. Another main driver for space manufacturing is the cost of self-sustained factories themselves. Here is where things get interesting. On Earth, the word factory conjures up images of massive industrial parks taking up huge amounts of space, requiring immense amounts of capital. This isn't how things would work in space. Instead, raw materials would be launched in small pods that would spend a short amount of time in space. Their automated processes would kick in as soon as the pod reaches orbit before returning to Earth. Here, there may be more of a trade-off, where the cost of building massive factories on Earth could be reallocated to launch cost. There is a question of payload optimization, and this is where we still may need to see more improvement before this endeavor can truly take off. Launch costs are based on dollars per kilogram of both the raw materials and the space factory. If the pod is say 90% machinery and only 10% materials, that's not very efficient. But if the pod only accounts for about 50% or less of the total launch weight, it becomes more cost effective. The final piece of the economic puzzle is the overall value. Right now, this is a bit of an experiment as the process has never been done before. But there is some promise in the fact that there are many products that either can't be made on Earth or can't be made well without creating expensive factories that try to mimic the values of space anyway. Because these products we made at a much higher quality, it's possible that the value they generate could easily offset the cost of the voyage to space and back. The final benefit space factories would provide is bringing us one step closer to becoming a multi-planetary species. Having the capacity to create in space will almost certainly launch us literally to the next stages of our evolution as a species. Yes, there will be real economic questions with space factories, but regardless, we are living in a very exciting time. Space travel is moving out of the realm of science fiction and into our daily lives in a very real, impactful way, and it's only going to get better. But let us know what you think. Are you excited about the idea of making things in space, or is it just another fantasy that will eventually come crashing down? Sound off in the comment section below. All right, so that is a look at Varda Industries and their plans to build factories in space. When I saw this script come up, I was really excited to understand why on earth we would actually want to do this. But artificial organs, that one alone to me screams 
yeah, this probably should be funded and might be the norm in about 20 years. Currently, these are the sorts of things with biotechnology and bioengineering that are really difficult to do here on Earth. But what do you guys think? I'd love to know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching as always. If you want to be a rock star supporter of the show, please consider joining us on Patreon as a patron or as a YouTube channel member. Come hang out with us on Discord. You can have, pick new videos, write scripts and edit stuff and just be a part of the team. Thank you so much as always. Take a look around. There are some other videos we think you're going to love. And I'm Ricky Tuba Da Vinci. And just remember, the future is going to be awesome. <laughs>